In today's ceramics lab, I'm going to talk about how we're going to finish our flat coil projects. One option is to use glazes. Glazes are the special kind of paint that turns into glass when we put it back in the kiln. So if you're going to use glaze, it'll be shiny. It'll also be waterproof and heat resistant. So if you're going to use this as a trivet, like putting um, pots on or anything that needs to be either waterproof or heat proof, I would recommend using the glaze. If you're going to use glazes, there are a few very important rules you need to follow because these are a little bit different from regular types of paint. One rule is to not mix the colors. With regular paint, the colors mix very well and it is possible to mix these colors to make new colors, but a lot of times it just kind of doesn't mix well and it might separate or turn kind of a muddy color. So we're not going to mix the colors in the pot or on the project. We're going to use the colors exactly as. The second really important rule is to go over your clay with glaze with the same color twice. If you coat it just once, then a lot of times it's going to be a little bit light, which is okay if that's the effect you're going for. But if you want a nice thick coverage, make sure go over twice with the same color. Another very important rule is to not glaze the bottom of your projects. This one here is a beautiful example of a clay pinch pot by a kindergartner, but it has one big mistake, which she accidentally colored the back. Now, the reason why we don't want to color the back or the bottom actually is one, because it covers up your name. Two, is because when the glaze goes back in the kiln to turn into this glass material, it melts and then hardens. So when it melts in the kiln and your clay projects sit on a shelf when it's in the kiln, when the glaze melts and hardens, it'll stick to the shelf and then we'll have to break it to get it off, which will be a big bummer. Now this person got very, very lucky and it did not stick. So she was able to color the bottom and it was okay, but a lot of times it will end up breaking. So do not paint the bottom with glazes. This one is the correct example. Everything is painted with the glaze, except the bottom is nice and clean. Very little risk of sticking. If you accidentally do get a little bit on the back, just get a wet paper towel and wipe it off as much as you can. If most of it is off, then it should be okay. One more thing to remember about glazes is that the color that you see in the glaze pot when it's wet is gonna be different from the way it's gonna look in the end. For example, this is red glaze. If you look in the pot, it looks like it's pink. But this chalky pinkish color, once it melts and turns into that glassy glaze, it turns shiny and it turns a darker color. So a lot of the times I'll have some examples of what it's gonna look like on top of the glazes. So you might wanna look at that. Also read the color that's on top to see what color it's gonna turn in the end. So usually again, it'll get darker and it'll turn shiny. When you use the glazes, please make sure you only use the paintbrushes that are already in the color that you want to use. If there's not a paintbrush in there, that means that somebody else is using it and you just have to wait till they're finished. So don't just use another paintbrush and dip it in the color you want. Wait your turn for that color, please. In general, it's best to start with the biggest areas and the lightest colors first and move on to the smaller areas and the darker colors next. I think I'm going to paint my cat with orange for the main part. So I'm getting orange and just painting the areas I want to be that color. Try and get between those cracks of the coils too. So now I painted all of the parts that I want to be orange. But remember, it's best to go uh, with two coats. So I'm going right over with the same color. I'm not mixing the colors. I'm just repeating that same orange color on top. Okay, so now I've double coated everything that I want to be orange with my orange glaze. Now, make sure that you put this back in the right glaze container. Don't mix it with the other colors. Next, I'm gonna go with the pink color for the nose. Again, two coats. Same with the ear. 
and then I'm going to do the white parts of the eye. I know that the clay is white, but you do have to glaze what you want to be white with the actual white glaze, or else that part will not be shiny. I think I'll have a little sparkle spot inside the eyes too. Once you get to the smaller details like the eyes or the little patterns, if you want to switch to a smaller detail brush, you can. And I'll show you how we're gonna do that. So if you're gonna use that, get your own small detail brush. Dip it in the color you want to use. And I'm using this light green color for the iris. That's the colored part of the eye. So I'm gonna paint that in there. And then you're going to take your paintbrush and squeeze it on the edge of that right color container so that most of the glaze comes off of the brush. Then you're going to use your messy paper and wipe it off until it's almost all the way dry. Then you can move on to the next brush. This is called the dry brush technique. So next I can go into my black and then paint the pupil, the black part of the eye. Then I'm gonna move on to the brown. I'm going back to my bigger brush, adding in the patterns. And then I'm going to a bigger black brush to do the outlines. Now for around the eye, I think I'm gonna go back to the detail brush. Okay, so I've painted my whole project with the glazes. Now you want to check to make sure you have good coverage, but one step that you could do to make sure that your entire project is shiny is to go over with a thin coat of clear glaze on top. So once it dries, I'll show you how to do that. Now my colored glazes are completely dry. So if you're gonna do this step, make sure it's completely dry. If it's not, then when you put the clear glaze on top, the colors might smear and we don't want that. So this green stuff here, it looks like it's bright green, right now it is. But this will actually turn clear once we put it in the kiln. Purpose of this is to just coat everything and make it super shiny. And sometimes instead of bright green, it's a light blue color, but it's the same stuff. It all turns clear. So if you're going to do this step, you're going to just dip your brush into the clear glaze and you're going to go right over on top of your colored glaze. Make sure you get it all the way in the little cracks. And also make sure you're not scrubbing your project really hard because we don't want to accidentally rub off your colored glaze. You might see that I'm kind of poking some areas. You should use a regular light brush stroke over, but there's still little gaps in between your coils you could poke it a little bit to make sure that the glaze goes in between and turns shiny. And because we already coated this one time with colored shiny glaze, we don't have to coat it two times with the clear glaze. So there we go. And I know right now it looks like it's gonna all turn green, but don't worry, again, this green color will disappear once we put it in the kiln. So maybe you let it dry a little bit until it's ready to be picked up and then you can put it in the box to be fired. And in the end, I'll show you how it looks once it comes out of the kiln for the second time. Here is my finished project. When we put our bone dry clay in the kiln and heat it up really hot, it turns into this bisque ware, which is hardened, but it's still dull. 
on this side applied color glaze to make it shiny and colorful and also applied a extra layer of clear glaze to make it extra shiny. So now it's gonna be waterproof and heat resistant. 